Bye, have a beautiful time. Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. What we are now seeing is exactly what I expect to see continue. Democrats may have had a little bit of momentum, but most of it was superficial and a good chunk came from the vote blue no matter who crowd, people who were kind of jumping back on ship after all the failure that we've recently experienced from the Biden administration. But after all the most recent games that we've seen Democrats play, all the desperate little ninth inning tactics, it's all slowly moving away from them and slowly getting out of grasp. This right here is exactly what I said was going to happen. There's still two and a half months left to the actual election. That's a whole lot of time. That's a whole lot of time to campaign. And if you think about it, Republican primaries just ended. Really, the real campaigns just started. So the Democrat versus Republican polling numbers before the primaries are even finished are somewhat irrelevant. And already we're seeing a significant shift. I showed you guys just the other day that Herschel Walker just took a massive leap in the polls and is supposedly ahead Raphael Warnock. Well, now we're seeing the same thing with J.D. Vance. He's been viewed as a relatively weak candidate, and almost every single poll has been showing Republican candidate J.D. Vance in the state of Ohio, trailing by as many as 10 points, double digits, and all of a sudden, after the FBI's raid on Donald Trump's private residence, maybe that had something to do with it, all of a sudden, J.D. Vance leapfrogs and seems to be in the lead on an Emerson poll, one of the most Democrat-favored polling outlets out there. I mean, it's not as bad as Politico slash Morning Consult and YouGov slash anything, but still, Still, it's pretty damn bad and JD Vance is now taking the lead let's talk about this shift in momentum folks and why I think it's happening like I stated the temporary Democrat lead was nothing but superficial we've got some stuff to get into so let's roll the tape all right folks so here's the most recent poll from Emerson new Ohio poll the senator race JD Vance now sits three points above Ryan at 45 percent to 42 that I still believe is heavily underestimating JD Vance I mean we are talking about Ohio folks a place that Donald Trump clearly clearly carried two election seasons in a row. Donald Trump won the state by eight points in 2020, and I believe eight points as well against Hillary Clinton in 2016. And now all these Democrat shills and Democrat pollsters were expecting you to believe that Tim Ryan leads J.D. Vance 49% to 38% among likely voters in Ohio's U.S. Senate race. These are the kinds of polls that I've been following for the last six months. How unrealistic is it to expect that J.D. Vance is going to lose by 11 points possibly? Would Donald Trump carry the state by eight. And if you look at the Emerson polling data that I showed earlier, the Republican candidate is currently ahead by 16 points, Donald Trump ahead of Biden by 14, and generic ballots showing a plus 10 gap for Republicans. But somehow, J.D. Vance is expected to lose. I mean, what a farce. J.D. Vance reacted earlier in the month and called polls a, quote, big joke, and vows that he'll have the funds needed to fight Tim Ryan. And that's it right there, folks. These polls are nothing but a big joke. I will continue to confidently make this statement that the average polling out there is underestimated estimating the Republican lead by anywhere from three to six percentage points across the board, but especially in lean Republican states and battleground purple states. That's why I'm finding it so difficult to wrap my head around the fact that communist John Fetterman is somehow going to beat Mehmet Oz. I mean, for Pete's sakes, apparently the guy lived with his parents till he was 40 or 45 years old, never held a real job in his entire life, and is now pushing the most far-left political grievance politic campaign I think America has ever witnessed. A 45-year-old man child pushing an eat the rich communist political campaign grievance politics entitlement politics i don't like rich people rich people shouldn't exist says the man who lived in poverty his entire life because he was never willing to get a job he's just like bernie sanders except much worse and we're supposed to believe that he's gonna win in pennsylvania i mean obviously he's gonna win in philadelphia but pittsburgh not so sure about that one. The rest of the state, he's going to need to at least be able to compete in all of those counties because Philadelphia isn't going to be enough. Well, very simply, I don't think he's going to be able to compete. The overall political sentiment over the last two and a half years, especially, basically towards the end of the pandemic and especially down ballot or congressional votes, has been shifting rightward, which makes some of the polling data that we've been seeing these days completely unrealistic. And like I keep saying, folks, the number one factor by far, the most important sentiment 
sentiment is voter enthusiasm, voter turnout. You know, you could call 100 people, let's say 36 Democrats, 32 Republicans, and 32 Independents, and you can ask them who they're going to vote for. Let's say you get 46 people say they're going to vote Republican, and 47 people say they're going to vote Democrat, the rest are undecided. You might think, oh, the Democrats are just doing swimmingly, one point ahead. Even though that's not what we're seeing now, we're seeing Republicans ahead. But anyways, hypothetically, at the end of the day, those numbers are almost irrelevant, at least on their own. The most important number, or the most important factor, is how many of those people are actually going to show up on election day. But not only show up, but go out of their way to show up. Stay awake till 3 o'clock in the morning if they have to, waiting in that line to cast that ballot. Well, here, very clearly, Republicans have the lead, and especially after the DOJ and FBI's raid on Trump's private residence, Mar-a-Lago. Take a look at this, folks, and keep in mind this is a YouGov poll. Trump favorability before and after the FBI raid, August 7th with registered voters. 41% view Donald Trump as favorable, 58% unfavorable. August 16th with registered voters, gaining two points in favorability at 43% and losing four points in unfavorability. And then we go to enthusiasm metrics and we're seeing the exact same thing. YouGov poll, Republican enthusiasm lead increased by five points after FBI raid. Compared to 2018, are you more enthusiastic or less enthusiastic about voting in this year's election? More enthusiastic on August 7th, GOP at 45% leading by 10% over Democrats at 35. Fast forward to August 16th, 51% of the GOP base is more enthusiastic this year to vote, a 15 point lead over Democrats at 36. It's what I was mentioning in a previous video. Nothing has changed for the Democrats. The Democrat view has been the same since November 2016. Donald Trump is a Russian spy and a criminal, and he belongs in jail. You think the FBI changed any of that? No, of course not. But when it comes to Republican voters and conservative independent voters, it's having a seriously big impact. People are shocked, people are dismayed, and they're thinking it's more important than ever to show up to the polls and make a clear message to Washington heard. And folks, it's going to hit two times as hard because they're not expecting it. Just like in 2016, I mean, the reaction. Donald J. Trump is now president of the United States. President Obama. Democrats are hyping themselves up with polls like this, showing Val Demings ahead of Marco Rubio by four points. But the reality is probably something closer to this, with Marco Rubio leading by 11. In his Cuban district of Florida, Val Demings doesn't stand a chance. But Democrats think she does, because all they do is look at these ridiculously biased polls while they live in their delusional little Democrat bubble. But if you pay attention to the most credible of pollsters out there, nothing has changed. Trafalgar Group is once again showing Republicans take upwards in support with a 5% lead in generic congressional ballot data over Democrats. And like I'm telling you guys, folks, this lead is going to maintain, if not increase, especially in individual races in purple states. And just like MSNBC's Chuck Todd said, Democrats are heading for a serious shellacking. Nate Plastic at 538 won't see it coming. That's what I got for you guys, though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you feel like joining us here at the Liberal Hive Mind community. But of course, like usual, I gotta get back to work. There's a whole lot of liberal hypocrisy that must be exposed. I'm gonna get to that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.